All right guys, well for this video, I'm going to try something a little different. I think it's time to take you guys behind the scenes. Well, not that far behind the scenes. Maybe split the difference? Yeah, that's all right. Let's go with that. What's up guys, my name is Mark, and in this video I want to take you guys behind the scenes and show you how I light my macro photography and videography. Now the one thing I love about shooting with these old vintage lenses is that they make great models for macro photography. They're beautifully built with lots of intricate detailing that really showcase nicely when shot nice and close with a macro lens. Now another great thing about macro photography is that you don't need a large space to work with. Since the winter here is so cold and dark compared to our nice, warm, bright summers, depending on the season, I shoot almost all of my macro work inside in, shall we say, a less than glamorous setting. I use specific lighting strategies to help make the space look a little cooler. Now I typically use three different lighting setups when shooting this stuff. A single lighting setup, a two light setup, and a more traditional three light setup. Having a continuous light source really gives you control over a number of different lighting characteristics. You can also see how moving the light around can have a really dramatic impact on your image. But I'll get into that a little bit more later. The gear. Now the camera I use for this stuff is the mirrorless Sony a7S II. It's a full frame camera which works perfectly with my vintage lenses. Now as far as the lenses, I practice what I preach. I shoot all of my macro work on the vintage Super Multicoded Takamar 100mm macro f4 and more recently the 50mm macro f4. Now lighting is huge for macro work which is kind of funny because the gear I use is so small. So I use the Lytra Torch version one and the new version two, plus the Lytra Pro. Now what I specifically love about this lighting setup is that they're small, powerful, and have no cables to fuss over. They really do make the lighting portion of shooting this stuff much easier. It's true. In this first setup, I'm using a single Lytra Torch version 2 as a key light with a diffuser to help soften the intensity. Now diffusion will spread light across a bigger surface area, making it look more natural and more aesthetically pleasing. The Lytra Torch comes with a little diffusion piece, but you can use something as simple as parchment paper to get a similar effect. And the one thing I like to do with this setup is use an object with a reflective surface to place in the background of the shot. Something as simple as a glass of water will do, but I like to use these boating balls. The idea here is to use that reflection, which is coming from the key light, to create a more interesting dynamic background. Now I sometimes cheat in a practical light source, like this cheap IKEA lamp, to help give that background gradient a slightly different color tone. You'd be surprised how many different kinds of shots you can get by simply moving the light around to different positions. And all this with a single continuous light source. Now the second setup I wanna talk about is a two light setup. Now one thing I like to experiment with is color. Adding colored lighting to macro photography or video work can really help make a shot stand out. And you can do this by adding gels or colored filters to your lighting gear. One interesting setup I landed on by total accident was this one. Using my Lytra Pro as a key light, my neon logo sign as a practical background light source, and a red filtered Lytra torch placed directly behind the lens. 
I experimented with this setup a bit more and found that with the lens aperture closed, the background light is more dramatic and changing up the color filter on that background light can give some pretty interesting options as well. Now I sort of evolved this idea in my fast aperture video where I was referencing aperture speeds. Using my Canon DSLR and its pentaprism reflections, I was able to create an interesting visual reference to the aperture size by placing a single light torch directly behind the eyepiece. Its small size made it invisible to the camera that was recording it from the front, and using a diffuse Lytra Pro as my key light, my logo light as my background, the setup was super simple and it looked pretty cool through the recording camera frame. Also more importantly, it really helped illustrate my talking point. So my final lighting setup is a more traditional three-point lighting setup. In this setup, I'm using my Lytra Pro as my key light, a Lytra torch as my fill light here, and a color filtered Lytra torch as an accent light, just to give the image some edge. Now, what I love about this setup is that it's very compact and easy to adjust, even though I've got three lights going. Throwing up some colored filters on there is super easy and has a pretty dramatic impact on the image, depending on what you're going for. One challenge I had shooting with my old lights is that they were much bigger. And because of that, the light was harder to control. They also took up way more real estate, making my limited space even more limited. And using these small yet powerful lights has made doing these kinds of shots way easier. And because of that, I'm more inclined to experiment with different setups to see how they impact the frame. The small size also allows me to manipulate and hide them in ways that yield some pretty cool lighting results. Even this setup right here, I'm using a Lytra Pro as my kicker light and a Lytra torch as my fill light here. I really do use them for pretty much everything. Was that behind the scenes enough for you? If not, I am happy to say that I do have an extra Lytra torch version two right here that I'm going to give away. Now I figured it would be a fitting thing to do having spent all this time talking about all the ways I use this light. Link in the description for details on how to enter. Well guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video, found an ounce of value in it and all that fun stuff. Good luck to everybody who enters and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. What character does this remind you of? Reminds me of Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Oh, righty then.